Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased technical analysis. Now guys, I know we've been getting a lot of chop lately, but guess what? The chop won't last forever. From chop phase to trend phase, from trend phase to chop phase. Monday and Tuesday we had some blessings. We had some very, very nice one directional move. A big one to the downside, almost a $20 chop uh, drop, but the last two days has been a chop. Okay, I'm hoping with PPI coming out tomorrow at 8.30 a.m., I'm hoping this can provide some volatility. I don't care if it's to the upside or to the downside. I just want some volatility and get some tradable moves, okay? We're expected to come in at 0.2%. Now, if you don't know what PPI is, it's the producer price index. It's measuring inflation for the producers, the sellers. Now, the idea is that if inflation is high for the producers, it's most, like, it's most likely gonna be high for the consumers, okay? Hence the CPI that's coming out next week, okay? So if PPI comes in higher, that could be bearish. If PPI comes in lower, that could be bullish, okay? But at the end of the day, price action is the shepherd. And that is what Uncle Chadis follows. And we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna share with you how I'm gonna trade it. Let's go. Okay, here's the 15 minute chart here, okay? We had some decent, even though it was a choppy day, we had some decent level to level moves. As always, I wrote it in my Discord. I don't need to show you guys today, all right? Because you guys already know. But first thing I do in the morning is identify the first support level and the first resistant level based on where the market opens. This morning, the market opened at 395.13. That means first support was 395 with first resistant at the 396.5 to 397 zone. We had the first setup. It was breaking down 395 and it gave us a very nice level to level move. I had the next support at 393.5, okay? From there, we got the bounce. Remember, level to level means you enter from one level, you take profits at the next level, you can leave a runner, that's optional, okay? So that's a good level to level move. From there, it bounced. I did not enter direct here because I don't like buying direct from levels, okay? But we did get a bounce and then it cleared 395. Go that's a false breakdown setup, okay? Bullish setup for calls and it, we had 397 to 396.5 zone in play and it hit that. From there, we had a false breakout of the 396.5 drop back down to the 395 level right there. That's the sign that, hey, yesterday's resistant level, remember, 395 is was the tough resistant level for yesterday's chop. But there, we got a strong buying pressure. So yesterday's resistant level became today's support level. From there, we got a bounce, double bounce right here. Had a false breakout setup right here. Closed above 397, and it closed back below it. False breakout setup gave us a nice drop down as low as 394.5-ish, but it did not close below 395. And from there, just 395 kept the Fed and giving us washes below, hit that 396.5 level. Overall, a choppy day, and that's what these white lines are for. It, you know, over today's price action was pretty much a triangle. Okay. Now, for the last two days, we have been chopping. If I zoom out of this 15-minute chart a bit, you guys can see since we got that drop starting from early December, we are bear flagging. Okay, we're bear flagging. That's a th nice thing about when we're chopping, we can identify patterns like these, bear flags, triangle patterns, and we can identify where the breakouts and breakdowns gonna be. Now, very possible that we continue to fill out this bear flag. Okay, the, I got the breakout of the bear flag at 398.5. That's also based on my Fibonacci level on, uh, based on the daily chart. Okay, breakdown is 395, breakout level is 398.5, okay? If now the way I'm gonna trade this, I need to see the breakdown of this bear flag. I mean, if it breaks down 395, I will be looking for puts. Okay, uh, if it go test 398.5, which is the resistance of this bear flag, if it tests, reject, like I said, I don't like to enter direct of to a level, but if it tests this level, I will look for puts if it breaks back down 397, okay? Because in order to get to the 398.5, it needs to clear 397. So if it clears 397, hits 398.5, the resistant level of this bear flag rejects there and breaks back below 395, that's a false breakout setup that I will play puts for, okay? Does that make sense? So if it breaks above 397, I will play 
puts only if it breaks back below 397, okay? So the two ways I'll play this bear flag, breakdown of the bear flag, I'll look for puts, or test the resistance of the bear flag, take out a support level, and I'll look for puts there, okay? Now, you guys might not have the same, same style as me. You guys might be very comfortable with entering direct off certain levels. That's fine. All I'm saying is if you are going to do that, I would try it at the 398.5 level to 400 zone, okay? That's where I would try puts direct, okay? Just make sure you have a proper stop loss. You've got to respect your stop loss, okay? I'm not going to tell you where to respect your stop loss, but that's up to you. What I would do, though, is if I'm entering around 398.5 for puts, my trade would be invalidated if that level clears, okay? At least on the 15, 30 minute chart or higher, then I would respect my stop loss. If it breaks above that, it breaks back down. That's a false breakout, obviously. Look for puts, okay? I, I said a lot of things, but uh, I hope that makes sense. So I'm hoping with PPI tomorrow, we get some volatility. We can end this chop range, this basing mode, when we get the breakdown or the breakout of this bear flag okay now usually bear flags are bearish trends but to get to confirm that we're getting some bearish moves we need to see the breakdown okay like i said 395 you break down 395 um uh, that could be a sign that we are heading to the next uh for the next one direction to move it'll be a continuation from the downtrend that we had from december 1st okay remember it can't go you know can't go straight down forever okay we need to have some basic mode to fake out the bulls, fake out the bears, and also to build strength for the next move, okay? Now, we look on the daily chart. You can see this white Fibonacci channel line here. SPY respected that Fibonacci channel line, okay? We broke down that line back in December 6th. Today, that support got tested and treated as a resistance, so a bit of a roll reversal here, okay? So it's it's actually bearish when we break down a support level and we treat that support level as a resistance that's usually a bearish sign. To cancel that, obviously SPY would need to get above 396 uh 397.6 and of course that break above 398.5 which would be a breakout of this intraday or this small time frame bear flag that we got here. Okay? So all we got to do is wait for the right setups. All right? Bull case scenario, clear 397.6 and 398.5. We could possibly go back and test 400. The back test of this down, uh, of this um, this uptrend line right here, this pink uptrend line, is around 403. Okay? So the two levels that got to recapture is 397 and 398.5. Then we could possibly go test 400 and back test this trend line that we had. Okay? That's around 403. All right, that's the bull case scenario. And remember the bear case scenario, how I mentioned how I would trade this. Break down 395. Break down this bear flag and maybe we can get a continuation down. 393.5, 392, 390, and 388 are my downside targets below. Okay, below 388, we definitely do got more downside. 385.5 to 386 zone. Uh, we got a gap around 380 to 381 zone. Okay. So just let the price action guide you. You guys got my levels. Add these levels to your charts. All right. Long the breakout resistance. Short the breakdowns of support. However, got to watch out for those fake moves. And don't let those fake moves discourage you. If you long the breakout of resistance and then it, that resistance level does not hold as support, cut your loss and look to re-enter for the false breakout. Just reset for the next trade. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. But there is something wrong with not respecting your stop loss. Okay, so we got a back test and go set up here where the support, the breakdown level gets treated as a resistance. Also has a back, that back test and go set up on triple Q as well. Okay, remember that 38.2 FIB level I had at 284.88. Today, that level got tested as a resistance. So if triple Q wants to continue being bullish, all right, it needs to recapture 284.88 that's a false breakdown setup to put 287.7 then 290.7 and 294.5 ish in play okay now if if 284.88 holds i need to see support levels show follow through reject from resistant take out support 282.5 we can go back down and test 279.5 if that fails 278 and lower down to 273 ish 
All right, you guys got my levels, add them to your charts. Also, a back test and go on. Dow Jones broke down the 340 level. It almost tested as a resistance, just a few cents shy. I'm willing to be bullish if 340 is recaptured with 343 and 346.8 ish in play. Okay, that will give us a false breakdown setup. All right, as long as below 340, I am bearish. I want to see 338.5, 336.5 get taken out. I have the support also, also at 334.7 that needs to get taken out. And we can see more lower lows. Maybe go down to test 332.6, gap fill at 329.7, and the critical level at 325.2-ish. Okay, so above 340, bull. As long as below, stay bearish. Wait for that breakdown support. All right, Tesla uh, gave us some I wouldn't say bullishness, but it wasn't, you know, intraday it wasn't bearish. But looking at the daily chart, it is, it did technically close lower than yesterday. So that is bearish. Okay. Uh, I got resistant at 175.2. I need to see that resistant level clear to put 177.4, then 178.3 in play. Okay. Above 178.3, I'll be a little more bullish. 180.5 and 184.5 would be in play. Okay, as long as below 175.2, uh, we have support at 172.3, uh, 169, and then 166.4. Okay, so do not get bearish unless we're above 175.2. As long as we're below, watch the next breakdown support, which is at 172.3. All right, guys, Apple. Also a back test and go setup here. We broke down that 143.5 level on Tuesday. Today we tested that same level as resistance. So now that we rejected there, I really want to see 141.7 support fail again. But this time, the likelihood of it recapturing is much lower with, uh, with 139 back in play. Gap fill at 138.4-ish and maybe down low to 137 and 135.7 then 133.8 okay i'm only bullish if apple can recapture 143.5 to put 144.8 145.7 and 147 back in play okay let's look at some inverses now dxy is showing bearishness guys false breakout setup here it tried to recapture the uh, the setting triangle it failed closing back below yesterday today it treated that level as resistant now, it's looking like it wants to go test 104.3, and if that fails, 103.7 is in play. Okay, I'm only bullish above if it's above 104, uh, 105.3, okay, to put 106.3 and 107 in play. All right, VIX, it, you know, is giving us a false breakout setup here. All right, it closed above that 120, uh, that 22.5 level today, closed back below. False breakout setup. So if VIX wants to get bullish, it needs to get back above 22.5 tomorrow. If not, we could see more downside here. Okay, a low VIX is usually showing that we, there's not much fear in the market. All right, so interesting how we got a you know this type of price action on the spy with the VIX acting like this. Very interesting stuff. So we're gonna end this with the option flow filter for 500k premiums or above. Overall today, the uh, option flow for SPY is 62% in the call. So overall bullish. Okay, we see this sweep here over 5,000 in size. 410 strike price, December 16th day. All right, this one's over 500K. 20,000 in size, 420 strike price, December 16th day. All right, and this one's a 400 strike. Over 2 million premium, 5,000 in size. Interesting. So we're seeing big money bet into the upside today. Triple Q. Overall bearish, okay, but look at these bearish orders. If lots millions of dollars worth, like 34 for this one, 10,000 size, but very in the money put. Strike price 318. They entered around 283.5. Very in the money put with millions and millions of dollars going into this. It looked like hedges, guys, but you know, we gotta let the price action guide us. But this is what the option flow is showing us. It's showing us hedges, or at least I think they're hedges. You guys let me know what you guys think, all right? Dow Jones. Nothing. Tesla. 84% in the puts. We're still seeing those big money, very in the money puts. Still coming in, guys. Strange. All right. Are they, what are they? Are they hedging? Uh, here's Apple. 
All right, Apple got nothing but puts. $10.5 million premium split order, 230 strike price. All right, October, uh, January 20th. So very, very in the money puts are coming in for the kings of the tech sector, Apple. Okay, DXY, nothing, and VIX. VIX is bullish. Look at that. Bullish VIX. Interesting. 1 million. 60 strike price for February 15th. These are split orders though. 1.3 million. 25 strike price. Okay, this one's in the money. Uh huh. Okay, so big money's pretty bullish on VIX overall. Okay, so you guys keep that in mind and add that to your own due diligence. All right, if you want more content from Uncle Charters, definitely consider joining my Discord. I got some holiday deals. Information is in the pinned comment below. I appreciate your time so much. Peace.